Hey crafters, welcome back to my channel Because I'm Crafty. My name is Caitlin and today I have part two of my baby booty tutorial. These are the baby Oxfords. They are the little bit more difficult of the two that I made. And like I said in the first video, these are both from schwindandschwind.com and they were both free patterns. I will link them down in the description below. And this is not super hard to make. It just has some more pieces and components. But you certainly don't have to use them all because some of the accent um, pieces, they aren't actually functional, they're just there to add interest. So you can stick with some of the base pieces and just keep those the way they are, or you can add the accents like I did. So here is a close up of the baby Oxford. So it's got the accent color on the top and on the part that wraps around. And I also put the grippy fabric on the bottom and I just put a button with a snap underneath. I thought that would be easier to do up than having an actual buttonhole. And then you've just got the little, you just slide in there. Really super cute. So again, with their pattern, they did things a little bit differently because they used some kind of leather type fabric that um, wouldn't fray away. Um, so some of their stitching, they just did straight stitches and stuff like that. Um, whereas I'll show you I used some zigzag stitches because I didn't want anything to leave its location, uh, especially for the accent pieces. So if you guys want to learn how I made these, then keep on watching. So I'm going to make it the 12 to 18 month, and there's an 18 to 24 month size too, but I think I'll make the 12 to 18. So I'm going to put the skirt fabric on the bottom. I've got a little piece of batting that I'm going to use um, in between the bottom so it's a little bit squishy. And I'm going to pair it with this kind of knit sweatery fabric. I'm going to use these buttons for the closure and this to go with it, just this jersey. It, they're just scraps from other projects I've done and I did want to make a pair of booties so I might as well use what I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and actually cut this out exactly where I want it. I probably won't be using them again anytime soon but if I need to I'll just print off a new one. This fabric is kind of weird, that's why I'm using my paper scissors. I don't really want to wreck my fabric scissors with these weird bumps. So these pieces, they'll be kind of sandwiched in between. So we'll have this grippy fabric on the bottom. Be like that. And then we'll have our inside fabric. For this top part of the shoe, it says to cut a bit of interfacing to keep its shape. So the pattern says to attach the interfacing and your outer fabric together. Now mine's not a fusible one, I'm just using a sew-in, woven sew-in. So I'm just going to pin them together because the next step of the pattern says to sew on the accent piece that goes on top. So I want to catch all of those pieces at the same time. So now I have both accent pieces pinned for my heel and the top of my shoe, I'm gonna go ahead and zigzag those on. So I'm going to switch my machine back to a large straight stitch and just base the other edges together so we don't lose them later. So the next step wants you to sew your liner heel and your outer heel together with your right sides together, leaving the bottom open. But since it's knit, I'm going to try this Teflon foot and see if it'll help the knit go through smoother and the pattern calls for a quarter inch seam allowance for this part. This sewed really well with the jersey on the bottom and the Teflon foot on the top. So it says to clip your corners and turn it right side out. I'm going to have to get uh, my gauge in here and push out the corners a bit better but it went pretty well and then after it says to top stitch around the top of the accent piece. Let me 
using the pointy side of my gauge to kind of help poke my corners out and pop them out. So I'm going to put my straight stitch on my longest stitch because this is really thick. So I know that it's not going to feed through all that easily. So with a quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to sew this straight edge of our toe piece. And then it says to open this up and fold that down and iron it. So in the next part, we're gonna attach our heel to our sole, but they suggested doing a basting stitch around the pieces so that they stay together. So there's our soles. Now I can take the heel part and start pinning that on. So it says to find the center of the heel. So I'm gonna fold it in half and put a pin in it and the center of the heel about here so this is the right side because it's the bottom so it'll be like that so you want to put your centers together and then pin the rest following the curve of the heel Sew this part on, it says to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance just in case you, you miss any layers because it is thicker. So just ensures that you catch everything instead of using a quarter inch seam allowance. So for the toe part, again it says to find the center of your curve. And do the same with your toe, which should be directly across from the point. Put those right sides together. Okay, now I'm going to unfold it just to see what it looks like, but there's still some things that I want to do to it. I need to make sure that it caught it all from the inside too. So I want to put my liner on the inside of these booties so that they are complete. So I'm just going to open them up. I'm just going to trim off some of my seam allowance in the bulky areas. I'm going to take a needle and put some thread on it. I'm just going to keep it single layered. And I'm going to start at the back here. And I'm just going to create a little knot below my seam. I'm just going to go through my fabric in the same spot, but do it two or three times. So then I'm going to take my liner piece and I'm going to fold the edge of my fabric under at the back in a similar spot where I've got my needle started. And I'm going to just grab a piece of this fold here. So that it matches up with that knot that I started. And then I'm going to go through that booty fabric. So the part where I've got my seam. Okay, so now I want to take another fold of this fabric. So I'm creating a seam allowance. And then I'm going to grab a piece of the booty to fix it. So I'm basically tucking fabric under and catching the seam allowance of the part that I've already sewn on my booty of the sole and the heel so that it's all encased inside so you can't see this seam allowance once I've got this attached. I don't think the pattern or the instructions actually called for this step. They just cut down the seam allowance so it wasn't as bulky and left it the way it was, but I kind of want the inside to be finished. I want to sew a snap to 
the ankle part so that it has a closure on it. So I want to double up my thread, my needle, and tie a knot right kind of in the center. So I'm going to go underneath where I can access one of the holes. Put my needle through and I'm going to put my needle through the loop of my knot and pull it tight. Then I'm just going to go through that same spot two times. Kind of lock that knot in. I'm going to take my snap, go through one of the holes. I'm going to catch a piece of my fabric and go through my hole at the same time. I'm going to go through that hole three times and on the third time I'm going to go underneath my fabric. So I'm not going through the hole again and go through my fabric towards the next hole. So I'm going to catch my fabric and go through the hole. That's one, two, and on the third time go through the base of the fabric and head towards the next hole. And I'm not going through all the way, I'm not hitting the right side of my fabric. Third time, go through my fabric and I'm going to go through that spot a couple times just to lock in my knot. Okay, and then I can cut that off. Now I want to do the same to the other side, make sure I get the matching part of the snap. So this is going on top. So I'm going to put a little pin where my top snap matches so I can get this one in the right spot. put this button directly over my snap. So I'm going to do the same thing with my knot. Once I pull my loop through, I want to go through the loop and pull that. That way my knot cannot go through my fabric. So I'm going to go through that same spot two more times. Go through the holes. And go side to side through my fabric. Go up through my button and down through my button. Go through my fabric right under the center. I want my button to be really secure because it is for a baby and we don't want it coming off. So I'm going to go through the middle of this button quite a few times. I want to make sure that it's really on there. And I want to wrap the thread around the base of my button nice and tight. Okay, and now I'm going to tie a knot around it. Do that twice. And then I'm just going to take my needle and go through the thread that we just knotted underneath it, just to secure that. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little baby Oxford 
booty tutorial. If you haven't seen the first video that I did for baby booties, it's a little simpler pattern. You can check out that video, I will link it down in the description. And if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below, let me know if you'll be making some baby booties. And if you do, make sure to share a picture with me on Instagram or Facebook and hashtag because I'm crafty. Make sure to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. See you next time crafters, bye!